divine origin. I am not an Arab. Do you think I'm an Arab? Don't I'm not. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So, uh, can I finish my point? Can I finish my point though? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very, because you've raised a very important question, right? right. Okay. So I want to do some justice to it. Right. I myself am not an Arab. It is not easy for me being non, a non-Arab to understand and appreciate the message of Islam. Okay? I can understand that Quran says, or the Islam says, worship none but God. Be kind and dutiful to your parents. It tells you, do not kill a girl because she's born as a girl. It says, do not commit injustice and in, in imbalance in your measurements. So these things, I don't need to be Arab to understand this message of God. I don't need to be an Arab to understand that there is a heaven and hell in afterlife. I don't need to be an Arab to understand that God has created heaven and hell for as a place of reward and punishment. I don't need to be an Arab to understand that there will be a day of judgment. I don't need to understand God's all of these messages by being an Arab. In fact, in fact, history today from 1400 years ago demonstrates that the majority of the people who are Muslims are non-Arabs in the first place. So Arabic language did not stop people from becoming a Muslim. So there are wisdom behind why the last messenger was given an Arabic Quran. You're not fully answering the, the question I've just asked you. You focused on... Can, I, can you get my... You focused on the, on the language of, of the Quran. What I'm asking you is, is why an almighty, powerful entity capable of creating the universe would need a middleman. Okay. Yeah. What, you would expect some, something or some, some as powerful as what you're describing to produce within a split second a thousand books in a thousand languages for everyone to read and understand. Right? Now, second point. Can you not touch me? Okay, thank you. How do you know that this man lived more than a few hundred years ago? Who claimed to be the last messenger of God and who received a message through Jibrin or Angel Gabriel, right? How can you be sure that he was not mentally ill? That he was not, uh, he, he was not seeking attention? That he was not seeking power? 
So, yeah. so you said mentally ill, mm -hmm. seeking I'm not attention. Saying yes. No, 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 the no, prophet. The prophet. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How do we know? Mm. So this is. So much which has a satanic information. Satanic person. He's going to get. So, your first question is, why doesn't an all-powerful God, creator, send hundreds and thousands of books to all individuals? It's, it's like this, why doesn't the creator individually give a book to one on, on self and guide them? Okay? Now, we are talking about the wisdom of our creator. Why Allah does things in a certain way? What he does and how he does is his prerogative. For example, you can ask yourself, why didn't God make me a woman? For example, why didn't look, look, look? If somebody asks this question, why didn't God make me a woman? You can ask this, you know, unending, never-ending questions by questioning the action of God, right? And then you will say, why, 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 why? The simple answer to this question is this. La yusalu, I will translate. I think this is how the ayah goes. He would not be questioned for what he does, what God does, but you, us, will be questioned for what we do. Right? What we do. Yeah. So God creates, does things, actions, because he's wise and he's just. Right? He's all knowledgeable, he's just. Yeah, yeah, so the way he does these yeah. things, why did he create the heavens and the earth in this way and not in another way? Why does water boil 100 degrees in our earth? This is from his wisdom. Why? He could have done other billion possible ways, right? So by questioning this, it doesn't really gives us any means of saying, okay, the other ways may be better and so on. So when it comes to guidance of people, the Creator tells us, he sends, or rather, he guides people, whether one is grateful or ungrateful. He guides them, shows them the way. Says, he shows, I'm translating, just to tell you that I'm not making this up. This is in the Quran. God certainly, He shows you the two parts. Whether you are grateful or ungrateful. So individually, on an individual level, God gives us his guidance. God gives us the guidance. But when you... Brother, brother, it's okay. Be patient, brother. It's okay, okay. Speaker's Corner, we have to learn patience. So I know, I know it's difficult for many of us, but... Now, um, I wasn't rude. I'm, I'm sorry, my brother. I'm saying it's important. I'm reminding everyone to be patient. I, I apologize if it came rude to you. I, I, I shouldn't have said that, but that's important. Yeah, yeah, anyway. So, the divine guidance on an individual level comes, God shows. Imagine a idol worshiper. Can I, can I, can I, can I finish our conversation first? One second, one second. Just really brightly, if I own a house, if you own a house and I came into your house and I took over your house, would you be happy? No. No? Why is Israel allowed to do this in front of everyone to Palestine and no one's saying anything? That's a simple argument. Wait, hello. No. Okay, never mind. Right, that's another, another, that's another bit, point. Another, another debate. No, no, that's a, it's yeah, a fair we'll point. Say, fair point, but we can discuss. It's debate. not relevant to what we're discussing. Yeah, yeah. It's a fair point, no, not relevant yeah. to discuss. So, God, in His wisdom, he created us not to be forced to believe. Please don't say that. Right? Mm -hmm. Not to be forced to believe. If everyone had sent a book by God and they're absolutely sure it's from God, there is no choice remaining anymore. People need to be in a particular scope of freedom to use their intellect to arrive at the truth.
that God sends prophets and messengers. It's, it's the same argument used. Uh, no, no, no. You can, you can, you yeah. can say Christians, whatever. Yeah, yes, but this is but a, this, yeah. th this is an yeah. important point mm -hmm. because otherwise there is no point of believing or even saying I have freedom of choice or free will because you will not have freedom of choice. Imagine now God tells you directly here, I am God and worship me, right? You have no choice but to accept that he's your God, your Lord. There's no point saying, oh, I will be good and I, will be, I won't be bad because you are not under any mm. choice anymore. You are now forced and compelled to do that. So creator, in his wisdom, he sent prophets and messengers and gives guidance through them by demonstrating, firstly, that you can actually verify them as prophets and messengers of God by using your intellect that God has asked you to use. He does that. And then once you do and accept it, then you have now passed your test. Because this life is not that we are here for mutual joy and happiness only. Islam doesn't tell you this information. The reason why we are suffering is part of the overall framework in which God tests us. Right? Test us. So, so. That's what your religion tells you. That, that is what we can tell you it will make sense. If it doesn't make sense to you, we can have another discussion. Yeah. Now, then, when God gives us a test to fulfill that test using our heart and our mind, our eyes and our intellect and our, and our hearings to accept the truth, obviously there are people who would not be able to do that, right? Because they want to go against God's message that he has sent. Mm -hmm. They will try to say, I'm going to worship a tripod. I'm going to worship a man. I'm going to worship a God who has a son, who has a daughter, who has an uncle, who has a brother, and so on and so forth. People will try to continue to do that because of the traditions they may have inherited. So God sends a book, a revelation with proof and evidences so that people can use their rational faculty, the intellect to verify that this is from God. And this is what I was talking about. I give you certain examples. So why does God allow us this? Because God wants us also to develop. He didn't just create us in one perfect state. That is not what Islamic, Islamic epistemology and its you know, mm -hmm. beliefs and you know, all these messages and ontology. Islam tells us that we have been created so we can grow intellectually in our maturity. We can strive ourselves to be better and better. We are not like animals, Islam tells us. We are better than the animals, right? Some people can be worse than the animals, like we have seen earlier on, the, the attitude that people are demonstrating. Yeah, the second point is, how do we know that this Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not mentally ill, yeah. um, someone who is seeking attention, someone who is seeking power, and is someone there any tells, other thing? Well, someone who tells fibs, or someone, who walks, someone? You know, someone who tells porkies, who tells, tells fibs, you know, someone who uh, is trying to seek no, he wants to make a name for himself. Yep, yep. name. He wants power. He, for... you know, he wants to attract the crowds. Yep. Yeah. And be famous. Famous, yep. yeah. Yep. Fame, famous. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Let's deal with that. Yep. So we're talking about two things here. One mm -hmm. is the individual state of being, his mental state, his mm -hmm. mental health. Yeah. And the other one is the motive. Yep. Okay. Now, how do we know, for example, someone is mentally ill? A mentally ill individual demonstrates in their behavior and interactions are mentally unstable, mentally ill. Right. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, so when the Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave us the Quran, mm -hmm. in which there are as to how you conduct societal affairs, how you run a country, how you have your economic system and you know social system and education system, how you conduct you know relation between other nations and tribes and so on, how you have an outlook in ethics and morality, mm -hmm. how you live your life individually and in, in, in society. To give you some examples, he tells you, okay, that you need to be truthful, you need to be reliable and trustworthy, you need to be honest in your dealings, in your affairs, in your interactions. Everyone needs to do that. He sets a framework, a framework in which the society is raised based on this ethics and normality mm -hmm. or, 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 or morality and people will be accountable in that society if people for example they rob you they kill you they rape you they plunder you or your wealth take your land away your house away like the other brother was saying earlier on when someone comes to your house and takes your house away and so on now he gives you reasonable 
acceptable laws. For example, he says, for example, if someone kills, mm -hmm. you don't say that you give him 20 pounds fine because we know it doesn't work. Killing, murder does not stop by saying the penalty for murder is $20 or 20 cents or 20 pounds. It doesn't work. So what Prophet ﷺ came with from God, laws and regulations, what we call Sharia, the law, in which you, if you are a lawyer, you will understand how even the deterrent aspects makes the human living such a better experience under Islamic law when it's implemented. Implemented. Today it's not implemented and that's why we see all this chaos and corruption and all these things, fitna and fasad, all around the world. But when it was implemented, so just give you one example, not too long ago, even in Saudi Arabia, right, which is a monarchy today, right, people, when the time of prayer came, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you know what they did? Time for prayer came, we need to go to the mosque, the masjid. They will leave their shops, it could be a shop selling gold and jewelry. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to lock it under lock and key, put a clothes over it, open. No one needs to stay there. They will go and pray and come back with this confidence in the heart and mind that no one is going to steal. How did it transform a society of Pagans who were burying their daughters alive because they were born as a daughter. Islam came and transformed them into this state of being. So Islam gives us all of these laws and regulations and teaching. This does not reflect someone who is mentally unstable. So this is my point there briefly. There's no point going into two details. If you want to question and criticize it, I can go into detail. Second thing about motives. Now, if someone is not a messenger of God, an imposter, a fraudster, a fake individual, that person needs a motive. Why is that person claiming to be a prophet of God? Is that claim going to give him some credibility, authority, power to do what he's trying to do? That's people's motives. Maybe he wants to get famous, as you said. Mm -hmm. Do you know what people did at that time? When he was calling the people to worship none but God and abandon the worship of the creation, abandon worshiping idols that you craft with your own self. When he asked people to worship God, at one point they said, you know what, stop calling us to this one God. Tell us what you want. If you want to be the king, we will make you our king. If you want wealth, just tell us what you want. We will make you the richest among us. If you want women, just name them. You can have any woman that you want. Fame, power, authority, fulfillment of desires. You can have all of this materialistic need fulfilled. But stop calling to worship one God. You know what he said? Because if he was an imposter, he has succeeded. He has succeeded in his plan. Now he can be a king and he can control the people. Now he can be the richest person and he can control the people in power and authority and so on and so forth. He's dead. But he said in another occasion, if you gave a son, the son on one of my hands on the right, for example, and the moon on the other, I would not stop this call until God you know, prevents me from doing so. So a sign of sincerity and the absence of this false materialistic motives is demonstrated. This is about fame, power and so on. Name for himself. He was already famous. He was known as Sadiq al Amin, the trustworthy, the reliable. People did not know him other than being someone truthful and trustworthy all his life. He was famous to the point that this is how they arbitrated their matters with him. So at one point they wanted to rebuild the Kaaba, in which was that stone that they need to place. Tribal disunity started growing. I want to place this. Our tribe should place this stone on that 
corner of the wall. Another tribe says, no, it should be our responsibility. We are more noble than you. I'm paraphrasing the history. They started this disunity and, and, and problems within themselves. And they then eventually said, you know what? This is not how we can resolve. It's going to amount to a war. Like over a camel, we've been to war for 40 years. This, who knows what's going to happen to our nation with our tribal you know, disunity because of that. They said, but we know someone who can arbitrate and solve the problem. They found Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were happy to make him the arbitrator, right? So he was already a famous individual. He was already known to him. So it wasn't about making a known a fame, a name for himself. Attention and power, he already had the attention. Power, he was offered to him, but he rejected. How did he live when he had the power? That's another test for a fake individual. If someone is fake and imposter and fraud, when they have the power, you will see in their life, in their actions, the demonstration of someone's bit of fraud. They will live a life of luxury. You know, living in a palace like this, with all they need, right? Food and wealth and clothing, whatever, you name it. People will be like on his feet, kissing his feet and worshipping him. Like some people used to do with kings and monarchs and so on, right? They will be humbling down to him. But he even said to his people, when he was with, when he was coming along, right? And he was, uh, the people were sitting, his companions, and they stood up. He says, no, you don't need to rise up for me. He stopped them from even rising up. Look what we do in our cultures. When a teacher comes, we stand up. When something happens, we stand up to, in the courts, for example. Prophet said, no, you, you can't elevate him like this, right? Mm -hmm. So when he passes away, don't make his tomb a place of worship. That is what we are demonstrating. So how did he live his life? Okay, having all the power to control one third or even at that time, you know, a lot. How did he live his life? When he died, we can see. When he passed away, he left his possessions. Now we can see how much heavy bolts of the banks that you need for the world to transfer his world to there, right? He had a shield from someone else that was given to him, which he um, was holding, you know, like because you're a trustworthy individual that needs to be returned. Mm -hmm. He had a jar in which there was water. He had a bed made of um, these date palm leaves and a stone brick, a brick for his pillow. And some utensils were maybe some dates, some body, something left. That was his possession. Now, an individual who is a fraudster, a fake, wants fame and glory and power and authority, living a life like this and leaving these possessions as inheritance, this doesn't demonstrate that he was someone who had this ulterior materialistic motive. There are loads of people who've left their position after they died and they're not prophets. Let's understand one point. Okay. Does this sound to you someone who has a materialistic motive? Uh, you haven't explained, you have, you've missed a few bits. In let's the, talk about... The, yeah, in the biography. No, 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 let's talk about all these things. But when it comes to power, mm -hmm. fame, authority, Na ma na making a name of himself, seeking attention and so on and so forth. Besides being mentally unstable and producing a Quran, no one can match whether with its, with its laws or its sciences. Imagine if this was the justification for progress in scientific knowledge, we should induce people to be mentally ill. Because what Quran has brought from its sciences and teachings, which you think could be a mentally ill person's product, we need to make every scientist mentally ill. Because that is the level of what the Quran has brought to the world sphere. So, does it sound to you that he was after power? Right, can I respond yep. Yep, from the beginning and then I move on to the biography that you gave of the Prophet Muhammad? Go ahead. Right, now first of all, 
if it's important for the whole of mankind to recognize the existence of a supreme being who has created everything in the universe, why make the message so obscure? Message is not obscure. It is obscure. No. Because it's coming from, it's not, it's not prime. It's not the, the, the uh, Okay, can I yeah, stop you for one second? Just to, just to, talking. just to, just to it's talk about, else just to, no, no, just to, just to um, clarify that point. The Quran says, this is book of, book from God, point number one. So now you know where it's coming from. And this here tells you, worship me and none else. And here is the evidence that it's from me. So it gives you the evidence. How is this obscure? See, there's no evidence. Uh, it's wait, wait. So, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. One moment. I will entertain all your yeah. criticisms. When you say there is no evidence, is no, evidence. no, no. When you say there's it's no the evidence, word of one please, 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 please. What's, yeah. What's your name, my friend? What's your name? My name is Gilles. 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 I'm yeah. Mansour. Mm -hmm. Gilles. Yeah. When you are already saying there is no evidence, when even the very talk that I gave earlier on, I was offering evidence. So you can't say there is no evidence. To you, what you can say. No, to you what you can say is, I have not heard of convincing evidence. No. Now, I can say the only evidence that convinced me is when God tells me personally. But is this a really an objective way of verifying God exists? Is this an evidence for everyone? No, because that may be that you have made up, you have made up something of a criteria for your own self, knowing that no evidence on earth, even if, let me tell you what the Quran says. If the unbelievers saw there were stairs going up the heaven, the dead spoke. You know what? What people will say? You will not say, ah, now I accept the evidence. They will say, we are bewitched. We are deluded. We, this is an illusion or a delusion. We have been under the influence of magic. There is nothing. In an insincere, insincere, arrogant individual when it comes to evidence, because no evidence will be convincing to them. But a person who is sincere, wanting to know the truth, they can see the evidence. When the people saw Prophet Muhammad for the 40 years of their life, and when he said, I'm a messenger of God, sufficient for them as an evidence he was a messenger. They didn't need to hear anything about the science that I was talking about earlier. Not needed, it was unnecessary. Why? Because people's level of evidence is something that they know what is convincing for them. You may have this ultra demand for evidence because you know in your heart you don't want to accept any evidence. If I were to ask you, no, no, I'm going to ask you directly. <laughs> Name me two examples of evidence that will convince you without a shadow of doubt that God exists. Number one. Manifestation would be one. Manifestation. Manifestation would be one. Manifestation. Yeah. yeah. Number two. Yeah. Able to talk and that. Able to talk. Yeah. God able Directly. to talk. Directly. To everybody. Directly. Hang on. To everybody. Hang on. To everybody. Not. If you saw in the sky, someone like says, I am God. Mm -hmm. You saw it. We all saw it. Mm -hmm. And it says, I am the creator of the heavens and the earth. If God were to manifest himself here and told you that, so now you've ticked the box, you'd accept him? I'm not sure. I don't See, oh, wait, we stop no, there. No, let me finish. Okay, let me finish, finish, finish. Because in order to assess the truth, you have to be rigorous. You, that's why the sci being a scientist is a very difficult job. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you have to search, and sometimes you have to go back onto your assumption. Yeah. And you should be your assumption of manifestation. Yeah, no, no. You should be humble enough. Yeah. To accept that maybe what you believe in might not be true. Um, we are not discussing that. We are discussing yeah. what would convince you manifestation. Now, what picture do you have of God that when He manifests, or when it manifests, when God manifests, it never happened. What, anyway. One second, please, yeah. please. Now. It's your chance to demonstrate that you know what you're asking for. So tell me, what are you expecting of God that he would manifest as what? You're making the claim. Uh, uh, no, I'm not making the claim. No, no, I, have, I have reversed the table. Mm -hmm. I have said, 
What would convince you without a shadow of doubt? Why did I make the qualifier? Without a shadow of doubt means unquestionably you will be convinced. You said I am not sure. That means you were not convinced what you asked for. So let me ask you again. I'm going to probe on this number one manifestation. What are you expecting to God to manifest that you are absolutely convinced that he is God? The manifestation has to be assessed and assessed thoroughly. So I can't give you a straight answer straight away. I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm going to listen. Tell me, what are the manifestations that you're expecting so I can tick your boxes? Uh, let's, let's use a, uh, a phenomenon. You know, in the past, when people saw a rainbow in the sky, yeah. they thought it was a God creating it until the scientist understood refractions. The, the work of prism and how, I hope you don't mind. I'm just sitting there. I'm a bit tired. That's okay. Apologies. Yeah. You're more than welcome no, no, to sit okay. beside me. Okay. That, 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 they, they understood how light was composed. So then, from then on, they can they they can uh, ascertain that what that's what the rainbow is made of. Now, you're asking me if I see a. Uh, some, something extraordinary. What do you mean by extraordinary? Right, something we've never like seen before. Like, yeah, a like what? Yeah. Because, let, 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 let me tell you. Huh? Microphones with you. Yeah. Oh, microphones. Yeah. Switched up. Thank you, pardon. Sorry. Let me show you something absolutely silly. Like, like a, a big yeah. hand. It's with me. A big hand coming from the sky. And, 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 oh, big hands. Big hands. Yeah, Manifesting big hands. No, 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 no. I'm going to take anything that you say yeah, and I'm going to test this. Image. We're going to right. test this so, manifestation. Yeah. So, so when you say manifestation, take, you say, yeah, tell me. In, it could take a long time to, to really assess whether what's happening is happening for real. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. You saw a hand coming through. Yeah. So how are you going to be convinced it's God? I may, not, I may never be convinced because then what you're asking for is not convincing. Yeah. So that means your so, your demand that you ask yeah, yeah, is not convincing yeah. to begin with. Yeah. Try again. Yeah. What I'm Shall saying, we go to number yeah, two? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Please, yeah. please. What, what I'm saying. What's the name again? Gio. Gio. Yeah. Gio. Gio. What, what I'm saying. When you are asking, take, don't take things as true from someone from the from the words of someone you've never met who died hundreds of years ago. I am giving ago. all that you want yeah. in terms of convincing you. Mm -hmm. That there is a creator. So I want to hear from you, from your heart and your mind and your intellect and your scientific methodology or otherwise, right? What would convince you that God, that's God? When you came with the example of manifestation, you will never be convinced according to what you've just said. Mm -hmm. you know, so that means what you demand, if you have a hypothesis in your mind and says, look, you'll never be able to falsify it. That is not a good hypothesis. You will reject that because it's not testable. It's not provable. So what you've asked for... Proving, uh, no, please, proving something no, no, is difficult. No, 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 please. Yeah. What you're asking for is not that it's going to provide you evidence of certainty in your heart, in your mind, from your own example. So I have to cross this out. It is not what will convince you. Number two, able to talk directly. If you hear someone saying, I am God, we all hear it. You will be convinced? Okay, well, let's talk then. No, no. Would you be convinced? I, I, it's, it's God. Right. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't ask, I ask questions and I wait for him to carry on. And, Just, okay. Yeah. Okay. You ask questions so and he answers given me a, He's given me a sentence. I'm waiting for paragraphs no. and probably a book. No, no. He tells you everything yeah. that you want. He right. answers so, you all of it. Answers mm -hmm. everything. Right. Would you be convinced? Well, that's purely hypothetical. I, it's, we're in Your the demand world. is hypothetical no, no, too. No, no, so it's not a problem. No, no. We're, we're in the world of fiction here. We, we can no. make up anything. Options. We are in the yeah. world of so, how do we understand? And the creator guess. So the creator tells you and has answers all your questions. You believe? It's purely how you think. No, 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 no. You demand evidence to convince you without a question of doubt. If this happens, would you be convinced? I'll ask for more and more and more and more until. So I at what point do you think you'll be convinced? Hmm? You're not sure. Yeah, because when you start, Wait, you know, when would you, you be start, sure? No, listen. When you start investigation, yeah. you never know how far it's going to go yeah. and when it will finish. And when you have all the elements, that's yeah. why even in the court of law, to bend, you yeah. even in the court of law, yeah. it's very difficult to prove that somebody is guilty or innocent. But for you yeah. to be con convinced yeah. so without a shadow, a shadow of doubt. doubt. So at what point you would say? Alas, now I'm convinced. Tell me, how, what point? How many questions? 
or science, you have to put a number. Mm -hmm. And it's not only me asking the questions, it's the whole world. So it's I just told you, you are asking something which is not going to happen. Why? But God did not create you for the whole world to be forcibly believing in Him. So you're asking, saying, oh, God, can you show yourself? And you see that bottle in there with the, that, that jar? And you've got the lid behind you, say, are you powerful enough to go into it? And you close it, you can't come out? Mm -hmm. You can't have that. So I'm saying, what you're demanding, ask yourself. It is unconvincing in the first place. Right. And so that, demonstrate, yeah. that demonstrates something about your own self. Perhaps you need to reflect more, have some self introspection and saying, why am I being this hyper skeptic about God? When I see the evidence, for example, have you ever felt and you said, oh, God, help me mm -hmm. ever in your life? In the past, when I when I was a believer, when you were a believer, yeah, when I was okay. So what did make you disbelieve in him? There must be some either emotional attachments, something that happened to you emotionally, or purely intellectually and rationally, or a combination of both. Because the whole story, I was I was brought up a Catholic, yeah. So the whole story from the Bible just didn't make any sense. It was not true to life, okay? Yeah, like some examples. Uh, the, um, the Virgin Mary, for instance, that, that's not true to life. That, um, there the, are many species of the animals who gives birth to the same species from the same species. I'm sure you heard about those already. Yeah. So I don't does, see does how... It happen, does it happen in humans? No, no, it happens in nature. Yeah. So you have already a precedent in nature, and then you can't say, oh, just because I haven't seen and witnessed in humans, it means it's not true, it's just a fable. It doesn't follow like that. This is really not very, um, you know, being reasonable. If there was nothing of this sort that we have an example to compare with, that's something say, look, this is like magic. Right. But what we have seen, what we have seen is how life can come to be, and like with these examples. I will be closer mm. to being convinced by a, a phenomenon like that rather by the, than the ranting of, of, of somebody who lived 600 years ago or more. Right? No, when you say ranting, you see, look, the language you're using, it's something that's offending yeah, to you, perhaps. Yes, you're right. right. It's so, it's, it, of course, very offensive word, but, yeah. you know, if you were talking about Prophet Muhammad I would like to know why this negative feelings. Okay. Can, can we move on to the biography of the Prophet? Yeah, we can. So, firstly, okay. so yeah. we need to just wrap up this argument, though. Sure, yeah. When you talked about he was... The Quran and Islam is a product of a mentally ill person and he has these ulterior motives to be famous, to be to be a king, to be a powerful authority. Yeah, now, yeah. the examples I have given you, offered to you, mm -hmm. um, demonstrates otherwise. Okay. And you said you're going to talk about this, but please do. So we can move, but at least we haven't found anything in his life which demonstrates that he was an imposter, a fake, okay. a fraudster. Uh, Let's you, go back. Have you read the Sahih al-Bukhari? Many parts of it, yeah. You've, you've read, have you read the part in book seven? Oh, I don't know. No, just oh, tell just me the reference and I can, I can look into it. Yeah. Uh, narration of Aisha. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad married Aisha when she was six. He consummated the marriage when she was nine. Aisha continued to live with the, with, with the Prophet until he died 10 years later. Sure. Right. So, yeah, I'm aware of this hadith. Yeah, okay. So, about, about, about what, marrying. What, yeah, you believe that's young. But the words are true because it's historically sahih. true. Sahih means authentic. No, you don't have to tell me. Historically, this is what is accurate yeah, for us. This is what it says, this is what's written. Yeah. Okay. You see, would you, would you have a friend who, who has had sex with a nine-year-old little girl. So, and secondly, do you have oh, any Let me write this down. Yeah. Do you have any Would compassion? I have? Do you have any compassion with little Aisha, who had non-consensual sex with somebody in his 50s? Sorry, I, I haven't finished my first question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would I have a friend, yeah. you know, yeah. having non consultious sex with a, a nine-year-old. A nine-year-old is okay. And the second question? Um, I think, read it, read, what did you write? Would I have a friend mm -hmm. who wants to have sex with a nine-year-old? Nine-year-old. Would I be happy with that? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, a friend being in his 50s. Okay. Yeah. And this friend is in his 50s. Right. Okay. So this, is, this is Prophet Muhammad. 
there are other passages in the in the Sahih of Bukhari. So you're t so you thinking that this demonstrates God doesn't exist? No, no. It demonstrates that the 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 claimant mm. doesn't have a moral compass. Oh, moral compass. Yeah. You're talking about moral compass. Yeah. What is the moral compass based on? Can I first establish that and then we can talk about it? So he has not a prophet has no moral compass. Prophet has no moral compass. So let's establish. Is it, is it right or wrong? Oh, right. Or, it, you even it, talking it, about right no, wrong? Is it right or wrong to force a nine-year-old little girl to force? Say, wow! Look at this claim. It has, make it. It has, it, a okay. nine-year-old girl cannot decide okay. if she wants consensual sex. Um, let's, have, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Yeah. So let's talk about you know holistically first. Mm -hmm. What is our moral compass based on? That we are judging something is immoral because your question is about immorality. This is an immoral behavior. Mm -hmm. So let's understand what is the yardstick that we're judging against. In this case, the law of the land. So if this country, this so country so yardstick, yeah. and you're going to stick to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yardstick is the law, the law of, of the land. The of land. Yeah. So the law of the land says you can marry an eight-year-old and have sex relationship. You'd be have no problem with anything that. below. Wait, the wait, wait. So, so remember. The yardstick from your own definition, law of the land. If we have now France mm -hmm. from tomorrow saying people can marry at the age of eight and have sexual relationships, and you are a French person and you live in France, mm -hmm. you're a French national. Mm -hmm. According to the criteria, the yardstick of morality, the moral compass, mm -hmm. you would have no problem with that, would you? You're making a fallacious argument. One second, one second. Law of the land determines what is moral. That's what you said. Yeah, but that's not one moment, please, yeah. please, please, please. Yeah. Let's go step by step. Mm -hmm. Are you saying the law of the land is what determines what is moral and what is immoral? Good. In this country? If England says it's okay to marry a seven-year-old and have intimate relationship mm -hmm. passes a law. Yeah. So according to you, yes. it is moral. No, it becomes just as bad. It becomes just as bad. I mean, it's very difficult for me to continue this conversation if you, if you backtrack. Uh, well, excuse me. Using, using Jill, Jill, yeah. if you backtrack from the no, very no, no, argument no, no. you said. No. Can I finish this point? Mm -hmm. You said the arbitration here is done by the law of the land. Whatever the law of the land decides mm -hmm. is moral behavior, is morally acceptable. If England decides having marrying someone, or not even marrying, having sexual relationship with a nine-year-old is okay, according to the criteria that you set, it's morally acceptable. Are you now going to backtrack no. that? What you're doing, this is what, what's known as a straw man. I'm not doing straw man. It's it's straw man I'm argument. challenging your. No, no, I'm challenging your yardstick. Straw man argument. How is it straw man? Yeah. So how is it straw man? You're, you're portraying a situation that does not exist. There, the, there, there has never been uh, uh, laws enacted of that nature. There has been. Don't but you know English history? In the UK, no. Henry VIII, he married someone very young, young. This but maybe, a, wait, wait, wait. This is the 21st century. Oh, listen, listen. This is the 21st century. So now, here, here are the problems that I'm finding, uh, Gio, speaking to you. Mm -hmm. uh, with all due respect, please forgive me if you find them offend mm -hmm. offensive. You said there is no historical precedent. And now, when we talk about history and precedents, you confine yourself, knowing that in history it exists, like Henry VIII, all the other English laws, even before, mm -hmm. and now realizing that it goes against you, against your criteria of morality, acceptable behavior, you confine to, not in the 21st century, you will say, morality of today, Sunday, the 18th of July, 2021. And you keep on doing that, just like you will keep on doing, mm -hmm. when evidence after evidence will be provided, you will say, no, 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 it's not convincing. So now, let me ask you once again for the final matter on the subject of morality, because I do not have even any you know, reason to continue any further demonstrating from Sahih Bukhari how it's acceptable or not by even discussing the moral arbitration, sorry, or the yardstick or the moral compass is enough and sufficient to dismiss your argument at hand. Let me ask you again. If a country decides for itself, law of the land, having sexual relationship with a nine-year-old is morally acceptable, is this morally acceptable? 
I would go against it. Then, so that, that, then it wasn't the law of the land then, because the law of the land is it's okay. So the, you have now. You know very well, if you understood logic, you've moved your goalpost. It's called the moving the goalpost one by one. I apologize, I apologize because you, you, you know, your, your argument doesn't work and you feel like, you know, how am I going to counter this and counter that? Be sincere and ask yourself, oh, actually, this man has some sense. Has, you know, it seems reasonable. If it was the law of the land which says this, but I'm not accepting it, even though I put this forward. So it is not the law of the land which is the moral compass. Can you think of anything else? Just to broaden your perspectives, maybe something else is what you're after, which makes things moral. The human rights. What are the human, human rights? rights? Charter. When you say human rights charter, who, who made them? Fallible human beings. And you saying they know everything, what is good for us and bad for us? Hitler knew what is good and bad for his people, didn't he? No. So you're perfectly okay. I'm not okay with Hitler. No, no, no. So you're Neither am I okay with people no, 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 saying no, 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 no. these are the human rights. Yeah. You see, you're perfectly okay for somebody to have sex with No, night. no, you're no. Not. Listen, listen, listen. You're not. Don't take my what I'm saying. I am saying I am not okay with your moral compass. That's why I'm discussing. I am not discussing Sahih Hadith in Bukhari about the marriage of Aisha anha, when she was six and so on. I'm not discussing that yet. Yeah. I am saying I don't even need to. I'm only discussing your presuppositions of moral compass. Let's talk about the moral compass. It wasn't the law of the land because even if the law of the land said it's okay, you would not accept it. You will just reject it, meaning it was never for you the law of the land. Human rights. If some people say human rights is this and that, you know what? Hundred years ago, same human beings were to be hang some people here. Do you know why they used to hang? Wait, wait. Thai burn. We aren't speakers corner. We need to know the history. Why they used to hang them? What was the punishment of homosexuality in this country? Probably death. Like, like, death. Like, yeah, like. The human beings yeah. decided death, yeah. which yeah. was human right and which yeah. was human wrong. Mm -hmm. So you are going to tell me human beings in 21st century can decide what is right and what is wrong. I don't buy it. It's not convincing at all. I'm sorry. So you're it's, not, it's not convincing to you either. Shouldn't be. Because you know by historical precedents, human beings were quite happy in offering their Aztec gods, gods of the Aztecs, saying these are virtuous things. That was a human right thing to do. But you know human rights and human wrongs can change and shift and reverse depending on time and space and culture and, and so on. So that cannot be an arbitrator, cannot be the yardstick. So you need to, my friend, you, you need to start reflecting on what indeed is the yardstick? What indeed should be the moral compass? Something that, uh, let me help you with some examples, maybe you can reflect on it. It needs to be objective. Law of the land is subjective. A land okay. can decide one law, another land can decide another law. Subjective. So first criteria of a moral compass needs to be objective. There will be nothing that you can bring from human experience of an objective moral compass unless it's from God. I can give you the argument of contingency and so on to demonstrate that to you. Moral, morality can only be anchored in the one and only creator who is perfectly independent and absolute. Absolute. Absolute being. It cannot be based on a contingent That's being. Your belief system. Not a belief system. That's your belief system. No, it's not my belief. It's my rational understanding. And I can go through the rational process to share with you how rationally these things are. So I don't need to just tell you I believe in X and Y and Z. So far, for the last two hours or more, I have not only given the reason, sorry, not stated my belief, mm -hmm. I have given reasons for my belief. Reasons which are intellectual, mm -hmm. rational, mm -hmm. philosophical, they're grounded in solid foundation. If you disagree with them, that's up to you. I mean, no one can take this away from you. Even at the end of the day, you disagree. But all we can say is, my friend, you, please, so you're, you're perfectly reflect, okay. reflect, yeah. reflect. You're perfectly okay for somebody to have sex with a nine-year-old girl. When did I say that? I, you, def you defended. No, I haven't defended anything. I have only questioned your basis of morality. Yeah. I have not defended or went against anything. I have not given my my understanding of whether this is acceptable or not acceptable. Neither. 
So you, what sit, I have you sit on the fence. Wait, wait, no, sit, no, I don't sit on the fence. Yes, you are. No, I don't. Why are you imposing your words no, on you mine? Sit, you sit I am telling fence, you that I have not. I have not given you any of them, whether it's this or that. Instead, what I have done to you is open up for you an avenue to reflect further, in which what is our morality based or anchored in or should be anchored in. For example, you would be perfectly happy of man having sex with man, right? No, I don't care. It's not about care. Yeah. Would you say it's, it's not, morally it's not, acceptable? It's not doing me any harm. I don't say about what she's doing to you. Let me ask you again. Are you going to say it is morally acceptable for man to have sex with man? I would say so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you see, even man having sex through the rectum of another man, that's what happens, right? Isn't it? That's what. Right. Uh, hang on. Yeah. That's what happens. It, You're saying yeah. it is morally acceptable. May I ask you why? Because it's happening between two consensual uh, human beings, adult human beings. Okay, yeah. got you there. Now we're going somewhere. Right. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Is it, is stop there. Stop, stop, yeah. sorry. We're going somewhere, Joe? No. So it's about adults plus consents. Yeah. So morality is anchored in, mm -hmm. independent of nation states, mm -hmm. as long as two adults, they consent to their behavior. That's it's more like yeah, yeah. What's, and, what's and another thing? Not harming anyone and else. And no harm. Yeah. Excellent. Not harming anyone else. Excellent. No harm. Yeah. So now let's test this. Um, if your son wants to have, if your son who is, when you, when is someone adult? Let's define that first of all. Eighteen. Uh, yeah. Eighteen. Good, good, good. Yeah. Over eighteen. Come over eighteen. 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 Yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. If your twenty-year-old son. Mm -hmm. 20 year old son wants to have sexual relationship with your wife meaning his mother consensually and using condoms according to your logic they're adults tick a box mm -hmm. consent tick a box no harm tick a box yep. it's okay morally acceptable uh, it's it will hurt me i'll be hurt no 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 yep. so harm meaning what so now you're going to redefine what is harm so let's go back again then because we haven't finished what we yeah. mean by harm yeah. so we have to come back to the example when you say there's no harm what do you mean by harm? When, for example, believing people see homosexual activity, it harms them emotionally, saying, how can they do this kind of acts? But because they're legally... Wait one second. Because if it's legally protected, otherwise you'd be a homophobic, they will they bite the bullet. That's what happens in a believing community. But it harms them emotionally, because they are concerned about how much harm their children will have by this kind of belief system and seeing these kind of things, right? To a believer, that's a perfect act, a sin in the sight of God. Sin. So they are really, really harmed. So according to harm criteria this is morally unacceptable part of the criteria is harm believing people theists are harmed yeah. this kind of acts so you are saying according to the this yeah. criteria of harm homosexuality mm -hmm. is not morally acceptable it, it doesn't fall into the framework of the law Wait, 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 wait. Forget about law. We yeah. passed the law of the yeah. land. We already discarded the law of the land. It has nothing to do with it. So now we're talking about harm. So now if people are harmed, believing people mm -hmm. who believe in God and consider mm -hmm. this is as a sin. Look, we have nothing against homosexual people. They have inclinations. But what we are saying is God asks you to curb your inclinations yeah. and don't act it out. If you act it out, you're being sinful. In a law, a country in a law which has laws implemented Implemented laws of God, they will be punished. But it's not on the people to take their uh, own hands and punish these individuals. No. no. Right? God considers a sin and there's a punishment for this sin. No. no right for people to be homophobic, right? Because people have many feelings. Some people want to have sex with their tree, whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you have, you know, the feeling that he's not a decent human being, not a human being. Still a human being, but they have these inclinations. Whatever reasons they have these inclinations. So, so according to harm principle, yeah. Um, homosexuality is not moral because it's a harm. According to your definition, emotional harm. No, I never said that. So, what do you mean by harm then? When your 20 year old son and your wife wants to have sexual relationship 
with condoms, you're right. saying you'll be harmed. In what way you'll be harmed? Yeah. So I, I'll give you an example of harm, right? So you have, in this example, yeah. yeah how yeah, will I'll be harmed? An example. If, if someone rapes you. Oh, no, no, stop, yeah, stop, yeah, stop, yeah. stop, stop. No, no, sorry. You, yeah. your son, yeah. 20 years old, yeah. wants to have sex with your wife, his mother. Yeah. And they all. I apologize for yeah, this yeah, example, yeah, right? Yeah, no, now they all, they're consenting, and they're going to use contraception. You said you're going to be harmed. In what way are you going to be harmed? Let's draw this list of harms that you're going to have to be uh, facing. Because I, I, uh, if I, if I love my wife and someone, in, in, in any, in any they love each other as well. Yeah, they yeah, love yeah. You. No, 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 you know, no, some no. people can't yeah, love yeah. multiple it's, people. It's emo we're talking about emotions. It's a natural emotion to be, to be. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. But, so, but yeah. they love each other too, as well. No. So now, so your your wife loves you. And she sexually loves your son as well, and they love each other. So then you I might have the choice if I want to stay with her or not. No, when you say harm, what is the harm again? I need to know what what, what the harm is about, so we can regulate um, and make certain understanding of this is what is harm, and then we'll use that principle to make things moral or immoral. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Morality is anchored in to adults having concerns and no harm. That's moral acceptable. So I give you an example. And we are only left with harm side, harm bit. You will be emotionally harmed because you feel some kind of betrayal. But she says, I love you still. But if I have the choice to, to let it go, and I, that's what I What's would... wrong with it? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with it? Yeah. What's wrong with it morally? What's morally wrong? Uh... They're consenting to yeah. adults. Yeah. So the wrong bit is harm bit. That's, is that what you're saying? What? There's something wrong is about harm. What makes it wrong is the harm that is causing you, isn't it? What makes it wrong? Is it making it wrong? Is so it's not wrong. I, is it wrong? I'm asking you now. Is it wrong? Is it morally wrong? It, it's uh, let's be talking about an, uh, a hypothetical someone would no. do something. Yeah. Real example, yeah. not hypothetical. Yeah. I am now reversing the table back to you for yeah. you to reflect on these, you know, criteria that you set up for accepting morality and and questioning prophethood mm -hmm. of Prophet Muhammad yeah. Islam. Yeah. So we need to have a moral okay. compass. So why is it wrong? That, they, that, that he has sex with my wife. Yeah. Why is it wrong? What's wrong about it? Uh, so, one hour. Okay, we're going to finish this yeah, soon, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. It's, in fact, there is nothing wrong. It's, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. So, there's I, nothing I, wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. It, there's it, nothing I, wrong. I, Let's I, leave I, it to that because we have I, to go. Yeah, now, I, I, may, I, may I, I mean, continue this conversation later because um, we've been talking enough a long time. Yeah. But a few points that I would like you to um, engage further with you again, if we'll meet you, Joe is on the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we touched upon the morality. Yeah, there's more, there's more. Yeah, we yeah. will talk about it, yeah. but not today, yeah. because we have a, a, yeah. a long discussion. Yeah. I'm going to make it short. So we're going to wrap this up by saying, uh, in the near future, we'll sit again, maybe here, and mm. we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. So we will establish the moral anchorage, in fact, what the moral or morality is anchored upon, or the yardstick, the moral compass. Mm -hmm. Once we agree on this, then we're going to apply that moral standard and see whether, based on this, his actions were moral or not. Mm -hmm. Because unless you and I know what is moral or immoral, what is acceptable or not, it is wrong to judge someone. Do you agree? It is wrong to say this is wrong when we don't even know what makes it right or what makes it wrong. Yeah? So let's leave it to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate um, we had a long discussion and you know we had a very, you know, very you know interesting discussion on various topics. So we hope that you know we meet again and we oh, talk. Yeah, there's more. There's yeah, yeah. More. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. We talk again. Yeah. We talk again and we, we, we brush this, you know, and then mm. and come to a conclusion whether indeed Islam is true, indeed if God exists yeah. or not. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And okay. whether Islam Take is moral it. or not. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the the, yeah. the, the perfect, uh, yeah. you know the, the so, reason of discussion. Yeah. So uh, you know, thank you very much for having yeah. a discussion with me, and you take care and yeah. all the best. And if I have offended you in any no, way no, by no, using no, this no, example, no. It, it and I apologize. It takes a lot. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Later. and stay well clear of nine-year-old little girl. <laughs> um, no, you, you, you see, that, that's a very cheap shot because look, yeah. I, I wanted to end it in a nice way without yeah. you know being uh, condescending and so on. Yeah. Let's leave it to that. Until we meet again, take care. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's okay. So, okay, okay. Oh, shall we just summarize? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah. So, today I talked about on the ladder, um, continuing on the older traditions that we used to do, speaking on the ladder and speaker's corner. We will maintain that, inshallah. Talked about 
with the theme that we started from the last two weeks, establishing and reasoning with people why there's a creator has to be one, the irrationality of polytheism or tritheism and triunitheism and so on. Today, I touched upon the reason I stated why Islam is the only acceptable way of life, religion and ideology from God for people to follow. And then I gave my reason for my statements of my belief, why Islam is true. And I gave two falsification tests from the Quran. And I gave you two examples of exploring one of the falsification tests. I talked about how the Quran says, if you want to disprove this book is not from God, just produce a chapter like unto it. For the last 1440 years, people have failed to do so. You need to really now start thinking, why is it impossible to imitate? Number two argument I provided for the truthfulness of Islam is that Islam or the Quran is free from inconsistencies and errors 1400 years and more has passed people have failed to find any all of the thing they bring in the service level is easily explainable and that was what we've been doing for the last you know 20 30 40 years in speakers corner and I offer two examples to reflect on in terms of how the Quran provides information of the past present then and in the future demonstrating the knowledge it's coming from God you cannot not only imitate it you cannot even demonstrate that it is false scientifically historically and so on and so forth I gave the examples of the bright piercing star with the hammering sound a tarak, which the knowledge of which we came to discover in our time today in our lifetime and I gave you the example of how there are darknesses of layers of darknesses in the oceans and there's total darkness after these layers and there are interoceanic waves where the Quran mentions which you need to go up in space to verify and understand that you can't just go with a diving kit and, and do that 1400 years ago there was no diving cylinders to go beyond certain meters to see this phenomenon so I gave these two examples to reflect also how the Quran demonstrates to you that it is from God and demonstrate to you that only one creator worthy of worship is not but none, none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is God alone worthy of worship this is the only God that you have of this universe there is no two gods or three gods the one who is absolute and there's one who's perfect and that is what we mean by submitting and surrendering your will to this creator that state of being is called Islam and one who does that is a Muslim